I'm going to show you something today you probably have never seen before on the Bobcat E10 excavator. And here it is. A hydraulic thumb on a Bobcat E10. So I got this excavator probably three years ago, maybe going on four. And it doesn't come with a hydraulic thumb. And it's something that I really wanted because I do a lot of trail work. I have to dig up stumps, I have to move rocks, and you just need a thumb to move that stuff around efficiently. So I started looking into it, and Bobcat doesn't make one. So I started looking into third-party manufacturers, a thumb for a Bobcat E10, and nobody makes them, nobody. So what I decided to do was to buy the smallest thumb that I could find and see if I could modify it to work on this machine. And I did get it to work with marginal success. Let me show you what I did. So this is the smallest thumb that I could find. So I measured the length of the bucket to make sure that the thumb would interact with these um, teeth on the uh, bucket. Um, I bought this kit, cost me about, I don't know, $600, $700, I think. It came with a, uh, a cylinder longer than this one. So this cylinder is an eight inch cylinder. That means it has eight inches of stroke. The cylinder that came with the, with the uh, thumb was a 10 inch. And the problem was the cylinder would make the thumb close, but you couldn't make it retract because it would bottom out before it would retract. That way, this thumb was always sticking straight down and it was in your way when you were trying to dig. So I bought this online. Uh, a win eight inch cylinder the bore is two and a half inches now I wish I would have got a two inch cylinder this this is probably too much cylinder for our thumb because if you can see this cylinder is a lot smaller the one that activates the bucket so this thumb cylinder can kind of overpower the bucket and it should be just the opposite the bucket should be able to push the thumb back a little bit when you close it and grip something the Bobcat comes with these auxiliary hydraulic lines, so all you have to do is get some quick disconnects made, get these hoses made, custom made at your local shop, and it connects right up. So one's to activate the cylinder from the top, and then a return, and then vice versa when you're pulling the thumb back. So it comes with these a bracket for here and a bracket here. These have to be welded on. Now one problem I had with this bracket was we welded this bracket right onto the boom and the, almost the first time I used this thumb picking up some logs, I actually tore into the boom. This boom metal tore into it. It was just too much force from this going into the boom. So what we did is we added a piece of half inch plate between this eye and the boom. And that seems to really have taken care of the problem. So just remember that this boom is a pretty light material. You have to beef this up a little bit. Now over here, we had two eyes for this pin. So we just welded it right straight to the boom. Any modifications to your E10 will void the warranty. So I did this after the warranty was up, so it didn't really matter. So we had the problem of the the edge of the thumb was hitting this hydraulic line. So we got the idea to make a cut. We cut out a section of the, the side of the thumb so it would clear this. We added a plate on the side just to maintain strength. Now, the, the thumb doesn't even retract enough to even get into that, so this was an unnecessary modification. This is as far as the thumb goes back. So as you can see, this pin which comes with the thumb kit is the is the pin that the whole thumb rotates on this pin is just to connect the hydraulic cylinder to the thumb now originally this pin was right here with the uh, hole being so far back uh, closer to the cylinder that meant that the, the uh, thumb could not retract enough. Again, the thumb would only retract to 90 degrees, which was useless because it was always in my way. So what we did was we abandoned this hole, drilled a new hole further down the thumb. That way we get more action. You get less power, but with this cylinder, I have more than enough power. So 
what you have to do is if you get a thumb, you have to move, drill a new hole and move this down. And like I said, I went from a 10 inch cylinder to an eight inch cylinder, but even with all of this modification, moving the hole and getting a shorter cylinder, the thumb still doesn't retract fully, which I'm not happy about. This thumb should retract all the way tight against this cylinder. Let me show you how it works. All right, so that's it for the thumb video. Um, if you're interested in getting a thumb on a, a micro excavator like this, this excavator only weighs 2,600 pounds. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I would say uh, you'd have to get it made at a shop, maybe custom made. You could try to modify it like I have, but um, you really have to put a lot of effort into planning and designing this thing to make it work properly. I'm 80% happy with mine. It works, it functions, but it's a little bit of a pain in the ass sometimes. So there you go. Hydraulic thumb on a Bobcat E10. If you like this video, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I like hearing from you guys. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Check out my channel, I have a bunch of other videos. I like talking to you guys, so let me know what your questions are. If you want to check out another video about thumbs for the E10, uh, there's a guy that has a channel uh, called Marquette Builders. I think he's in Canada. And um, he, had a, he has like a 15 second video on a hydraulic thumb that he had custom made and it seems to work very well. I contacted him to try to get him to fabricate me one and he said he just didn't have time. Uh, but I think that if anybody has a, a shop out there that can do some fabricating like this, I think it would be a good business to go into is manufacturing thumbs for these little tiny machines.